Word of Life with Rev. Mitzi Gibson is made possible in part by Grace Christian Center, Margaret's Beauty Salon, Tolly's AC and Refrigeration, and Harold and Elsie Broussard. Welcome to the Word of Life. My name is Mixie Gibson, once again. Very happy, excited for the teaching that the Lord has for you today, for me also, because as I teach you, I receive myself also, because we all need it. <clears throat> the Word that God said, the repetition is very healthy. Repetition is bringing back memories that we probably, and things that we have written and have forgotten. So repetition is very important. No matter how, much, how many times you read one psalm, no matter how many times you read the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, no matter what it, always you find something new as you read. <clears throat> Holy Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your compassion toward us, your children. And not only that, Father God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for accepting us. And thank you for helping us to walk with you. We surrender. We surrender to walk with you, not our will, but you will. In the majestic name of Jesus Christ, the anointed one, Messiah. Amen, so be it. We're going to be reading, uh, and let's see, we're going to be talking about the temple of God. The temple that Solomon was, David told Solomon to build for the Lord mighty God. That is the beginning that we're going to have, and then we're going to see how the Holy Spirit is going to be moving, because the Holy Spirit has very good things for us today. Because I was reading it, I was preparing myself, listening to the Holy Spirit, and I myself got very excited because, like I say, you know things, and you know that it is there, and you know that you probably are living it, but sometimes we're living it not according to exactly the, the, the magnitude that God wants us to live. God wants us to live in a way that everything that he has prepared for us, we'll be able to receive it. We'll be able to obtain it, not only, but we'll be able to enjoy it. Because, and we're able to glorify his name and testify, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord is doing. That's what God wants us to follow his way, follow his order, follow the way his word directs us by the power of the Spirit. In the book Isaiah, chapter 30, 66, I'm going to be reading uh, verse 1 and 2. It said, Thus say the Lord, Thus say the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build me, or you build for me? And what kind, of, what kind be my resting place? For all this thing, my hands has made it. And so all this thing have come into being by me, say the Lord. But this is the man to whom I will look and have regard. He who is humble and of broken, a wounded spirit, and who tremble at my word and reverence my commandments, and listen and follow my instruction. That, let me tell you, God don't look outside. God look inside our heart. Sometimes, you know, I don't know, I'm going to say this just for saying, but sometimes it could be people that just pretending that they are very good Christian, pretending that they are good and they're doing everything good. But outside, the way they're behaving, behaving, you know, in the, especially in the church, behaving in the church, whatever they're doing, they, they just, you know, pretending. And maybe they don't even know that. And they need somebody to correct them in case that they somebody know it. But God said, I want you heart. I want your heart. I don't want nothing else but your heart. Because once God has our hearts, our heart is going to be listening to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to direct us daily what exactly place he wants us to be, the place that, you know, the thing that he wants us to do. 
and the thing that he has planned for us that we are going to be doing in a job or in a school, whatever. Every day, every day, every moment when you open your eyes, the only thing that you can see is and say, this is a day that you have made and I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to follow your instruction. I surrender my spirit, soul, and body. I surrender my mind, my emotion, my reasoning. I surrender all. I surrender to your will. That's the way God wants us to live. In his perfect will, not my will. My will will make me fail. But God's will will never cause us to fail, but will take us to victory, to victory, to victory. So don't look at, like I say, God don't look for a sign, eternal sacrifice. And that was exactly what God was speaking to the people of Israel. You worship me, but you also worship idols. You are worshiping God, but you also are worshiping idols. And because you are worshiping idols, and then what kind of respect and honor you have for me? I said, don't worship another God, but my only me. I am the only God. And he said it very clearly. As we were reading the verse 1, he said, Thus said the Lord, heaven is my, my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of, what kind of house will you build for me? Solomon was tr trying to build a house for God. As the, the father David was uh, speaking to him before he died. So God said, Israel, you have failed so many times. And I take you back when you cry. And I want you to know that I will do that. But what do you are so rebellious? Why don't you try to live a, a way that is not supposed to be? God is a God that shows mercy to the humble heart. He will establish the new heaven. He who established the new heaven and the new earth is living inside of us. It is amazing. It is amazing what we sometimes see that God is doing and we don't, have, we don't understand. We don't understand. Even the beautiful temple that Solomon built for God Almighty was wonderful. It was beautiful, like he said, but the present that God wanted is yes. The temple was okay, but he won the heart of Solomon. He won the heart of everyone that had received Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Now, in, the, in Acts 7, I'm going to be reading Acts 7, chapter 7. Thank you, Jesus. 49.50. Am I going to repeat the same thing that I was reading in the Old Testament? If God made sure that he put in the New Testament. It has to be a reason. God repeats things for our own benefit. He said in the Old Testament, and now he's going to repeat it in the New Testament. He said, heaven is my throne and earth my footstool for my feet. What kind of house can you build me? Or you can build for me, say the Lord. Or what is the place in which I can rest? What is not my hand that made all this thing? He made it all. He made it all. Sometimes we feel like a, we can, uh, and it's true, we, we're sometimes a little bit ignorant because we don't know everything. That's the reason we need to read the Bible a lot. Because sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm going to do this way, I'm going to behave this way, this way, this way, this way. And what you're doing is, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to behave this way. I'm going to go this place. I, I, I. And God said, no. I will take you. I will help you. I will support you. I will maintain you and I will give you victory. It's him, not you, not me. And that's why we need to change our mind. We always say, I will do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No, God, will you please help me? You think that what I'm going to do, this is what I've, I believe that I want to do today. You, do you think that's correct? You want any change? You want me to follow everything, anything else that you want me to do today? in the same subject, maybe in your job. You want to do something in your job the one way, and God going to tell you, it is good, or oh, going to tell you, change this part, or he going to tell you, change it all, follow this direction. That's what God wants us to do, to live daily, living 
and by his wisdom. His wisdom is what keeps us healthy. His wisdom is to keep us not only healthy, but his wisdom is what help, help us to receive from him the blessings. God said that he wants to bless us continuously, 24 hours a day. He wants to bless us in whichever way it is, we're supposed to receive blessing continuously. A father, a natural father, a natural mother, always want the best for the children. Even when they don't have, they may sacrifice to buy something for the children that is asking it. So why cannot you believe that God is doing the same thing for you? The same thing for me? The same way we want to sacrifice for our children or for a nephew or niece or whatever it is, is the same thing that God wants to do for us. He already paid the sacrifice. Jesus Christ was the sacrifice. Now what we need to receive the blessing of the sacrifice that Jesus paid at the cross of Calvary. The cross, the shed of his blood, by the stripe, the lashes he received, the death, the burial, resurrection, that it was for us benefit, for our benefit. And that's what God said, everything that you try to do it's okay, but if you ask me to, to do it for you first, we need to go to God first. And you're probably gonna say, well, but God, you, maybe he don't like this way, the way. That's precisely the point. That if you, he, he know that you, you know that he's not gonna like it, it's because what you're doing is not correct, and God is going to help you not to get any mess. That's precisely the point, okay? Solomon marveled when he, because he thought that he's going to do a beautiful temple for God. But when he found out that it was not, he was not good enough to build something so marvelous for God. And then he realized that he needed, he needed to have the help of God. And I'm telling you, we marvel sometimes that God, we marvel, but God is of is God. Through his son, we have received salvation, Jesus Christ. And Jesus lives inside of us among human beings, that's what we are. In doing so, what we're doing, we honor and respect what Jesus paid the price at the cross, his life, his life, his gift, his blood, his life. Now, in the book of Second Chronicles, I'm going to be re reading um, chapter six, Chronicles chapter six. Thank you, Father. God is good and his mercy endures forever. You know, one thing I like about this reading and this teaching that the Lord has given me for all of us, including myself, because we had discovered some things that I knew it, but it was not absorbing. Sometimes you know things, you know, but you don't really got it. You don't, you don't really digest it in your spirit, your mind, your soul, you know. So it says like that, Chronicles 18.21. But... Will God, this is Solomon, when he found out that he, he knew that he was not qualified to do a temple for God, after God had told him, what are you doing? <laughs> the whole earth is mine, you know? But and he said, but will God actually dwell with men on the earth? He finally got together his mind. Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, Father God Almighty. He was talking to God how much less this house we I have built. Nevertheless, how could I? This house that I built for you, it's not compared to what you can do for us. And verse 19 says, yet have respect for my prayer. Solomon was knowing that he needed to change the tune. He needed to change his way of thinking. He said, yet, have respect for me, for my prayer of this your servant, and for this supplication, O oh Lord my God, to listen to my cry and my prayer, which your servant pray before you. He was in the presence of God, and he was praying. He said, I built this temple, but still, it's nothing. It's nothing. But because I know that it's nothing, now I ask you. He, he changed his attitude. He said, please, have respect for my prayer. Listen to my prayer, please. 
Now I found out that. If you are not with you, you're doing everything. I'm a failure. I'm a failure. He said, please, have respect for my prayer, oh, you servant. Have respect for my supplication, oh, Lord, my God. Oh, Lord, my God. If we finally he got it together, oh, Lord, my God. Oh, Lord, my God. To listen to my cry and the prayer which you serve and pray before you now. That your eyes, that he's talking to God, that your eyes might be open upon this house, the temple that he built, day and night. And still he knows that God allowed him to build the temple for a reason. Now, we're going to find the reason pretty soon. He said, your, let your eyes may be open upon this house, the temple that I built, day and night, toward the place in which you have said you will put your name, and the symbol of your presence will be to listen to and to understand, to listen and hear, pay attention to us, the prayers which you serve and pray facing this place. He said it correctly. He said it correctly. He said, wow, what is this? And you know, when I was reading and preparing this, I said, my God, sometimes we are just like Solomon. We think that we can do everything, and we think that we're going to please you, and what we're doing is a little bit mess if we don't ask you to stay and start the whole situation, whatever we're going to be doing, that you will be in charge and direct us. That's what God wants us to do. And he finally got in verse 20, when he said, your eyes might be open to this house, this, the, the temple that I built, day and night, day and night. But you know what? He was saying that because that was the temple that God allowed him to build because God wants people, all the nation of Israel, all the people of Israel, to come into that temple, gather together. God wants unity. God wants harmony. God wants all his people, all his children in one place. That was the beginning of them to know, to have a, ha not, they have built it different in the New Testament. But what I, God was trying to do here is that this temple, I'm going to be here. He said, my presence is going to be there. I'm going to hear you pray. I'm going to hear you cry. But what God is trying to tell us now, that temple he allowed to be built so the people gathered together and be his presence. So he continued to say, so listen to, and hope, listen to my request of this your servant and your people, Israel, when they, when they come and may fasten and the, this place are praying for you, hear from your dwelling place, heavens. Now he changed the tune. You hear, but hear from your holy place, heaven. And when you hear, forgive us. When you hear us, forgive us. Because when we come to the temple of God, what is the first thing that you are? At, at least I do. When I wake up in the morning, when I go to bed, before I go to bed, I ask, for whatever I have done wrong, forgive me. When I wake up in the morning, I say, any dream or anything, I, my soul, whatever it is, forgive me. I don't know. I was asleep. I don't know. You know, but I want to play safe. I want to make sure that before I went to bed and when I get out of bed, I am connected. I am connected. And when he said, listen, listen to the people of Israel when they come to this place. Now, as I, he said this, one, I want you to know something. That is the temple that Israel was going to get together with Solomon, the king. But let me tell you, the best temple that he had ever, 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 I have seen, or I hear God say, the best temple that God Almighty has created is us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Every man, every woman, every child, every boy, every girl, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This temple is more valuable than any house, 
that anything, and the church, we're supposed to be in church. Don't take me wrong. We need to gather together in church all the time that you can. Wednesday, third, south, whatever is your church, gather together. Wednesday, Sunday, Ma Saturday, whatever it is. You need to be in the church because that's where we get together as a brothers and sisters, spiritual brothers and sisters, and we worship the one that is glorious, who is magnificent, that is the one, and we share the thing that he has done for us. We share, we share everything that we ha he had done for us. So that's what God said, come to the temple. But now that we know that we are the temple of God, that the Holy Spirit live inside of us, that Jesus said when he was living, I will send the Holy Spirit and he will live inside of you. The Holy Spirit is God himself. God inside of me. What a blessing, what a privilege. Mixy Gibson had the God who created everything living inside of this body. What a blessing. I feel honored. And what it is this? God love. God love for me. God love for you. God love for everyone that received the Holy Spirit in, his, in this temple, in your body. Now, because I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to follow the instruction. I have learned, you know, when I was reading what Solomon discovered, it is good enough for me to pay attention. That sometimes we just come, Father, I want this, I want that, or oh, this is my schedule for today, this is what I'm gonna do. No, 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 no. You have your schedule, you, send, you show it to the Lord, and you say, do you think this is right, what I'm going to do today? Do you think that it's not, not something need to be changed? And I'm gonna guarantee you, he gonna say, yes, it's good, go for it. Or he gonna say, change this part, change it. Or don't do it today, maybe tomorrow. Do this instead. And I guarantee you, you will have victory. You will have victory because it's not my will, it's your will, God Almighty. It's not what I want. I know that I'm working, but who gave me that job? You give me that job, Lord Mighty. Who is directing me? My spirit is inside talking with your spirit. I am the candle of the Holy Spirit. My spirit is a candle of the Holy Spirit. So if you have the Holy Spirit inside of me, why should I not take the opportunity to live according to his principle? It is a blessing. It's a blessing. And it's a profitable to me. It is something for me and my children, my grandchildren, because when I listen to him, he's gonna give me instruction. And that's what we all need. Everybody need instruction. Everybody. Don't feel like you are so good or so high on your position or whatever it is. You need instruction. And the instruction that you need is from about. We all need the instruction. So what we say, I am the temple of God. I am the one that he has chose for me to live because I receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. And because he said, you, I am his temple, he said, take care of this temple. Take good care of this temple. So what is have to say, what God tried to say to me, watch what you say, watch where you're going, watch what you're doing. Ask me before you make any, any step or you take any step or you're doing something that you have not asked me to participate. God wants us to take him in consideration. He's God, he's God. He wants you to be victorious. And if you allow him to be in charge, I guarantee you that before the day is over, you have victory on top of victory on top of victory. And if there's any problem that he had to resolve, let him resolve it. Let him resolve it. He made you, he know what you need. He know what is not supposed to be in your life. He know what is not good for you right now. He know the problem that you have, it is bothering you, and he don't want you to be smart. happy, joyful, and tranquility. What else? Who can have a God like that? Who can have, is this not other God, like my God, like you God? So what we need to do is adore him, worship him, follow his direction. 
As we follow his direction, we know that we are going to be triumphant. We are going to have the victory because God is going to take us to the place that it will be to glorify and magnify his name and proclaim, look what the Lord has done. He needs a witness. Look what the Lord has done. It's amazing. It's amazing. It took me a long time to learn. And the little that I learned, I like to pass it through my teaching that God has given me. His teaching through my teaching. And you know what? And I still feel like a, I don't know enough. I do not know enough. I need more. I need more because the more that I know, the more I will honor and respect him. The more that I know, the more that I walk according to his principle. The more that I know about him, I know about me. Because he and I, we are one. And if I know him, I know that I know me because the thing that I'm doing that is not correct according to his will, I have to change it. I have to change everything that is not according to his will. Why? Because if I am the temple, why should I not obey the God Almighty that lives inside of here? This is a privilege. To have him in me is the honor, biggest honor that ever. So I will suggest you, please take care of that temple. You are his temple. Watch what you're doing. Watch where you're going. Watch what you say. Be a temple that God can be honored. Be a temple that everybody will say, God is with her. God is with him. If you need to call me, call me. The telephone number is 254-289-9600. And we can pray for salvation. We can pray for healing. Whatever you need, remember, you call me, I call him, and he will hear a prayer. I don't do nothing more but to be in agreement with you and what you need. And there will be a blessing because you're going to receive the benefit and I'm going to be very honored because he used me to help you. So please don't hesitate, call me. And if I can answer you right away, be patient. I will answer your telephone call. Remember that God loves you. And because he loves you, I love you too. He loves you different beyond my imagination, but I try to love you the best I can because God said to love one another. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Bless your family, your job, and everything that's around you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's the Word of Life. The Word of Life with Reverend Mitzi Gibson is made possible in part by Grace Christian Center. Argus Beauty Salon, Tolly's AC and Refrigeration, and Harold and Elsie Broussard.